Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be diving even further into Blood Magic and hopefully getting almost all of the quests complete. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, here we go, back into some more Blood Magic. I know, I didn't want to push this three episodes, but I think we're going to have a split episode right here where we do need to kind of push uh, furthermore into Blood Magic. It's not... It's not a, a short mod by any means, um, and it does take a lot of time to kind of go through. Now, I want to talk a little bit about these uh, these runes that I have been upgrading my uh, altar with. Uh, the altar is basically ready to go up to tier 5. Uh, it does not need too much more uh, in order to do that. As you can see, I've already made all the runes. The only thing the runes need is to be upgraded into their next tier. Um, and then we also still are missing our caps for our tier 4, and then of course the beacons for our tier 5. Now, once we get to that point, we might run into a little issue where we might have to run, uh, change this, but I don't, we might have to just change this to a different type of glass. I don't know if this glass will let beacon light through, and then we'll just have to cut holes through the side here. Um, I thought it was going to be right here, but I was completely wrong. The, the, basically where the glowstone is where those, uh, beacons are going to go. But, we need to work on a little bit of the deep dark side of blood magic, and that's going to be creating this lovely bound blade and not only the bound blade we need to really make this binding reagent and the binding reagent if you have followed along thus far you should at this point have at least a comic tartaric gem and you can see my will is up to 900 uh, it has been slowly but surely building up i've replaced these uh, swords three times now and uh, i have built up a lot of will uh, which is good and then you can see right here let's talk about these runes um, so I added some self-sacrificing runes. You can see my health bar is now back to normal. That's because uh, on the beacon, I removed all my health regen um, and just replaced it with uh, the regeneration. So that way, when I do take damage, I don't take any damage at all. So basically, I can stand here, hold this bound or hold this blade down, and, and yeah, it literally fills this thing up. Um, with this rune, uh, this self-sacrifice here that increases the amount I get out of this. Uh, the soul fray was actually coming from the structure we set up underneath. I know this is good for some things, um, but I did remove the incense altar uh, just uh, for right now. Um, it probably doesn't need to be directly underneath here, even though that's where I technically have always built it. I don't remember it always giving soul fray though, so maybe that's a new thing. Uh, I don't. I just don't remember it always giving you soul fray. Uh, but anyways, I can just stand here like this anyway, so I don't really need it. Uh, the self-sacrificing rune helps with that. That gives me a bonus. And then we have the speed runes. Of course, that makes the craft faster. Um, and then I added the runes of capacity. Now, I do have a few of these. You can see we have two, four, six, eight right here, eight of them. And this is making this from 10 uh, buckets all the way to 26 buckets of storage of life essence. Um, so that's what we're working towards. We have all this life essence in here. Uh, and yeah, I've just been doing a lot of craft. As you can see, I've been working on these blank runes and getting them upgraded. But today we really need to upgrade and get our altar to the tier four and tier five. And that's because we have stuff we needed to craft that involve those things. So let's get right into it. Of course, we need to figure out how to make this bound blade and also make all the other things that are a part of that. So with blood magic being on the list, let's go ahead and get that binding reagent and pull that up and see what it requires. So it's going to require a gold nugget, some gunpowder, redstone, and glowstone. And we're going to need this binding reagent. Also, we need at least a common or above tartaric gem, and we're going to need at least 400 will built up, and it's going to cost 10 for each craft that we do. So keep that in mind. Um, now, when I go ahead and I, I start working on this, we need to look at what this is all used for. Um, I'm probably going to make the armor set, all right, because this requires some iron. The armor set is really nice from Blood Magic. So we'll do that, and then I'll probably make all the tools. Uh, maybe. I think we might just do the bound blade, because I don't I don't really need the other tools from this mod. Uh, I don't think they're they're honestly used for anything else. And we do have the best tools right here. We do, however, need the bound blade. So if we take a look, we just need a, a diamond sword. Right, and then we're gonna need armor. So, I don't know if I have the armor in here, but I, I do have it in here. You iron, 
Actually, did I ever, I don't think I've ever made armor. That, that's interesting. I actually never made iron armor, so it'll be kind of <laughs> nice to make this, I guess, for the first time. Uh, but yes, we will need this. And the, the, the actual craft for this, the like, uh, recipes, are super cool. Like the way that this is built out. Oh, you guys are going to like this. All right, so let's get the last one, the boots here. All right, and we should be just about ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all this other stuff that we don't really need in here. There we go. All right, so making that binding reagent. We need to pull up the recipe again. So glowstone, redstone, gold nuggets, and gunpowder. So those are all the things that we need in here. And last but not least, we need at least a common or above for the tartaric, and we need at least 400 will. And it's gonna consume 10. We are going to need f five, five binding reagents total. So we got to let this do a few, do this a few times. And we'll have enough binding reagent to make everything we need. The armor is really cool. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. It does upgrade itself over time. So there we go. We can pull our, ta our tartaric out. We can leave that for right now. There's no real use for it. All right. So let me go ahead and break this bad boy. We'll move it over. Move it back here, why not? Because right here is where we are going to do these crafts. So remember, we just place down the arcane ash and we need to set this up, right? And we need to make sure we put what we're gonna put in there, in there. So we'll put the this in here and you can see it gives this huge area. And then we put the sword in, that's gonna activate it. It does this really cool thing and shoots lightning down. So be careful not to be around it. And this is going to make herself the bound blade. And then we'll talk about how that works here in a second. So we now have the bound blade. Now by default, it doesn't look like much, right? But if you shift right click with it, now you have the bound blade. Um, and what the bound blade does is each time you attack or use the, uh, or kill a mob, it will do a lot of damage and have a chance of giving you a weak blood shard and also pull life essence out of your soul network. Um, and when I say soul network, it's coming from the orb. So your orb, which we are on the tier three orb, at least I thought I had it on me. Yeah, the magician's blood orb. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that you can do right here, the magician's blood orb. You can just right click with it to fill up your, your soul network and uh, you can check how much is in there by using that divination sigil. You can see there's, uh, I have 87,000 life points in there, or life essence. Um, but down here, down here, we can put this in here, and it'll it'll slowly but surely fill up our storage. You can see right there, it's just draining from the pool and filling it up. So that's one way you could do that. You can stand here and fill it up this way too. Just want to pull that out for right now and kind of show you that this is the bound blight. So I need to make each of the armor pieces. The armor pieces work exactly the same way. We put down the arcane ash. Right, put that in there, and then we just throw a piece of armor in there, and it's going to do the exact same craft. It's going to do the exact same animation stuff for it, uh, but it's going to give us a little bit different. It's going to give us some armor. Now, this armor is very, very interesting in how it works. Um, over time, we have upgrade points, and you will upgrade. Uh, did I miss it? Okay, we already got it. So here is our living legs. Like I said, these have upgrade points and over, over time, which is on your main chest piece, by the way. So you have a hundred of them. Um, the more you do certain things. So like you, if you run a lot, you'll get upgrade points for running and eventually you'll get faster at running. If you jump a lot, you'll get a lot of upgrade points for jumping, which will make you jump higher and other things like that. So, um, pretty cool armor to be able to get some upgrades like that. And we'll be replacing this since we're working on the uh, blood magic. We'll be re replacing our elementium armor and we'll figure out a way to put this stuff on display up in here. I'm going to, I'm going to have some armor stands where, where we can display all of our armor that we've gotten thus far. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these armor sets and, or the rest of the armor set and I'll be back. So now that I have that full set of armor, you can see I've changed my angel ring to kind of fit the armor that I do have on. It is pretty, pretty demonic looking, pretty sick looking. Um, I do want to test this out. This should give us weak blood shards. 
the problem is, is I need to at least get one of them before we can set them to automation. So what I need to do is try my best to get kills with this sword that will give me that without being pulled into this. Uh, that's going to be a fun task. I don't know how well this is going to work, um, but we can try. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. That should use my network. It should. And it should work. I need to remove this temporarily. Ah, there we go. We got a shard. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take these filters. And, and at least I know that does work now. So I do know that that works. So I'm going to put that in here. And then place that back in here. Now we need to take this one. And we'll set this on that one. Perfect. Place back down the trash can. And that should allow us to re-automate this setup. Putting that filter in there. And there we go. So, that should technically fill with some shards as this starts working. At least I hope so. Uh, let's go ahead and try with this one, which has some room. And because it is linked to my name, it doesn't matter what uses it, um, since it is linked to my actual soul network. We should see some of these weak blood sharps, uh, shards build up, I hope. That's my hope. I hope they're not getting trashed. What is this? Let's make sure. This is a blacklist. So yeah, it should keep the shards from going in there. I hope anyways. Um, let's go ahead and try this one on this side. It might be that the user doesn't work. We'll, we'll find out. Nope, it works. Okay. So yeah, you just kind of have to leave it in here, let it do its thing, and it will generate these shards for you. These shards, however, make these uh, bloodstone and also are used to upgrade into the master orb and are used for some other creative things that you need to get into. Um, so these, these shards are like a, a gate uh, or something that you could, I guess you can call it a gate. Something you have to definitely do and get through in order to progress further into blood magic. So let's take a look here. We now have that. I need to get some dark glass because I got to fill that hole back in. There we go. Um, that should be taking care of those shards. I will just send it around, <laughs> hoping to gather more. And there we go. So now that we have those, we should be able to take some stone and be able to make this brick because it is one of the requirements for our next tier. So we need some kind of stone mixed with that. Good old fashioned stone, which we've used a lot in blood magic, actually. Take that. Add it into there. And then these are turned into the bricks. Now these bricks, well, they're exactly the thing that's required for blood magic for our next tier. And remember I said our tier is already set up, so all we gotta do is add these caps here. And that should, if all is done correctly, this should be upgraded to tier four. Yes. So this is now a tier four altar. You can see that listed there. Um, and that's because of these bloodstone brick caps that we just put on. Now, the only thing we need to upgrade this to the last tier, well, that's literally just to add some beacons. Um, and I think I need to craft beacons because I never saved the one I made whenever I made that top tier one. There we go. So we'll just make a beacon and we'll store it. Because we're going to need four of them. And we should be able to just place them here, here, and here. And it should make this a tier five. Let's get that residual. And I think this is completed. No, we're still at tier four. I don't remember. I don't think these need to be activated. Upgrade required, or upgrade acquired. We just got an upgrade, by the way, called Strong Legs. Um, I think that just allows us to jump higher. 
Um, yeah, it allows us to jump higher. So yeah, we're still missing something down here. And I probably need to take a look at the actual guide. We just got another upgrade. So we got quick feet, which should give us a speed boost. Nice. Like I said, that, this armor is pretty cool. The more you do things, the, the cooler the, the upgrades get. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a look and see why this isn't upgraded to tier five. I'll be back. So I ended up figuring out the reason why this wasn't upgrading. It's because I had it just a little bit off. Uh, there was one block here. Basically, this is where the glowstone was. I had to go one block more out. Uh, and then that, that actually works out perfect because that's where I was planning on this intersection here being, uh, which makes it so much easier on me. Um, so now I can go ahead and place these down because we did need to extend this out one more further. There we go. Now these beacons don't have to be activated, but I want them to be activated because I think that'll look kind of cool. And uh, we'll place this last beacon down and that should technically let this upgrade to tier five. There we go. So this is now tier five and we can get iron. Let's go ahead and grab some of that. We'll do four iron because each one of these are gonna require at least one. And I need to break the upper parts of each of these intersections here. And that should peer directly up. And if I wanna do something fancy, I can change the color of these if I wanted to. You can see now the beacons are just gonna go, actually we don't even have to activate them. They just need to see the sky. There we go. And last but not least, this one and this one. And there we go. That should activate the beacons. They should see the sky. This one, you're the last one. Why, why haven't you worked yet? There you go. All right, so yeah, all of these are active. Technically we can do, what, speed boosts on all of these? We'll give ourselves some speed boosts. I don't honestly know if that works, but hey, it's worth a shot. There we go, now we have a speed potion effect. I'll take that. We'll just take a few beacons. There we go. Awesome, so now these are all working. That works just fine. And uh, from the top, it should look pretty cool. Look at that. Look at that, the beacons just going straight up. And like I said, we can change the colors of these. And I was thinking more or less of going with like orange, like orange glass maybe, which we can totally do. I think I want to do orange glass and then uh, like blue glass and kind of have them swapped. I'll, I'll see if I can explain that. So we'll take your stained glass. I'll do um, cyan stained glass. We'll pull some cyan, even though I thought I'll hold the, I had all these out. And some orange. That should be plenty. We need that and cyan. Two beautiful colors here. And what I'll do is just cyan will go right here. That changes that. Orange will go here. Oh, this is gonna look so cool. Look at that. Perfect. This this does not scream chosen architect. If it doesn't scream chosen architect, I don't know what does. Um, <laughs> but anyways, that is working out beautifully. Okay, so with this being tier five, we're basically almost done with this whole section. Uh, we do have the blood tank. Uh, we have the upgraded blood orb, which would be the last one. Now, this one is going to require the weak blood shard, which we can easily set here and make. And then we take this and we just make this one, which requires 80,000. Um, should be very easy to obtain. All I'm gonna do is set here and literally work on those. Um, I'll, all I gotta do is stand here and hold down right click and this thing fills up instantly and, and we'll maintain that. So uh, that's all I'm gonna do. I think we just got another thing called Tough Palms, which this armor also helps us do the self sacrifice. Look at that, we have extra hearts now. Yeah, we're probably gonna get the upgrade for that uh, dramatically. Um, this thing, the healthy, the Tough Palms, that's all going to dramatically increase our health pool. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. So 
I'll meet you guys in a second. So at this point, we are almost done with blood magic in its entirety, at least for this playthrough and the requirements that are required. So we need to make a few things here, and this shouldn't take very long. Um, but the root of augmented capacity is going to require one of our runes. Now, this is going to knock our thing down, but I do already have a rune of capacity. We just need to upgrade it to a different tier. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I already have the runes, I believe, ready to go. Also, um, I went ahead and upgraded to the top tier slate, which is the ethereal uh, slate. And it's super funny because the quest, what you get for it, is just chicken manure, and it says in memory of Mr. Slater. Yes, and you just get some chicken manure. Wow, okay, uh, but anyways, <laughs> fun thing. Uh, let's go ahead and let's make that, uh, what I was talking about earlier, the Rune of Augmented Capacity, is gonna require uh, the Rune of Capacity, a demonic slate, which I already have, right here, and then one of our orbs, and I'm assuming it is the top tier orb, so there we go. And there is the rune of augmented capacity. Uh, of course, we're going to place that back down in our altar here in a second, but we have some more quests to complete. We have the demon crucible. Let's take a look at this bad boy. And you can see we don't really have to use the crucible, but it is a part of blood magic, I believe. And as long as these, these, you know, tanks aren't going to get a, get to us, the tanks are going to be kind of, kind of weird. But uh, at this point you should have everything required. So we need a cauldron, Lapis, diamond, and a piece of stone. All right. So, cauldron, diamond, lapis, and a piece of stone. And you need a common tartaric or greater with at least 400, same as the other craft we did, same as this craft. There we go. And you need at least a common or higher. And it's going to consume 10, I believe. Yeah, or 100. It's going to consume 100 will. And that's going to make that demon crucible. Now, what this thing actually does is you can place it down and I believe throw your tartaric in here. And what it'll do is it'll generate crystals um, from things like the demon cr uh, crystallizer and things like that. Um, it'll actually consume the will and fill up the area around you. Uh, I'm not too concerned about getting into that part of blood magic, even though that is a deeper, deeper, deeper part of blood magic, considering all we need to do is either draw blood out of our, our uh, crucible, which we still need to do because it's under our fluids right here. Uh, we already have 16 stored, so pulling that much out is going to be trivial. Um, and I'll show you an easier way to do that. Um, but for right now, we're almost done. Last step, right? Last quest we have is going to be the Master Ritual Stone. So let's go ahead and do that. The Master Ritual Stone is going to require four Ritual Stones, which you can get from the Reinforced Slates and a Blood Orb. There we go. And then we can go ahead and make the Master Ritual Stone, which is going to consume those Ritual Stones and give us the Master. Awesome. Uh, the master is how you perform rituals, and you could technically automate your blood magic setup, which we probably will do. I did place it there for a reason. Um, one of the bigger rituals allows us to automatically kill mobs that are here and use that to fuel and fill our uh, blood altar down there. So really cool stuff. Um, but we've completed that. Now all we got to do is get this blood tank tier 10 which I think more or less is just going to require you to make a bunch of runes. So let's go ahead and make some of these stones here. And we need to do this. Like we need to make, what was it? Some more of these blank runes. So the blank runes themselves, that should give us a few. Let's see, it looks like our craft got stopped. That's fine. That'll be 32. That's probably not gonna be enough to get us exactly where we need to go, but It'll get us close. So there's tank tier one. And we actually need two of them, surprisingly. So we need two of them because the next tier, this is tier one, the next tier is going to require two tier ones. And you can kind of see where this is going to go. This is also going to require us to make two more tier ones to make another tier two. And then that tier two is going to allow us to make a tier three. And you can see we've already run out of runes. 
So yeah, we're gonna have a lot of crafting over time. I'm basically just going to set up some rune automation and get that going. That's like the only quest we have left from there. So really, I mean, to be honest, we are basically done with blood magic. The only thing left to do is to get our tank set up. So let's get a tank. Um, let's see. I don't want to use this tank, of course. We just need a, I guess not a tank, a fluid conduit. A conduit for our blood magic stuff. So there's a fluid conduit and a screen. Lovely. And I just threw that on the ground. <laughs> we'll take this and we will get the screen set up. Because all we got to do here is go up underneath this. Of course, kill some mobs. Place this underneath the tank. And then we'll place the screen. And set the screen to... Let's see... Oh, it's, it's life essence, right? 50 life essence. This is for the first one. And this would be the life essence that you would generate for the other quests. And all we got to do now... I guess... Oh, yeah. We have to re-break this. That's correct. Because the screens don't like that. Set that to auto extract. And insert. That should start filling up. There's 16 or 17. And yeah, all we gotta do is fill this tank up. And if we fill, if this thing is full, which it already is. Right? Or once we put the augmented capacity back on there. Totally forgot about doing that. Let's go back up here and grab that capacity. That'll bump that thing back up to having a lot more. There we go. Let's put that back up to tier five and give us a lot larger capacity. There we go. There's 25. Uh, yeah, all we got to do is fill this thing up and we should be ready to go. This thing and just kind of wait. And over time, that last quest is going to complete for blood magic. So at this point, you may be like, man, blood magic, that takes a long time to go through. It took me three episodes. Well, that's nothing compared to Thomcraft, uh, as as that's why I'm waiting for the last minute to do this. But Thomcraft is going to be pretty easy uh, because there's actually a way to get around all the long the, all the stuff in Thomcraft that take a long time to do, and that is to get the Cheater's Thomonomicon. Um, the Thomonomicon is probably what I'll end up buying, and the reason I want to wait to do this last is because you do get some warp for gaining all that knowledge all of a sudden. And warp can uh, be really weird sometimes, um, causing really weird visual effects and things like that during your playthrough. And uh, I kind of just want to avoid some of that, at least as long as I can. But getting through Thomcraft actually will, should be pretty easy, uh, given the fact that we will have all of the research unlocked immediately. Uh, but other than that, we have to go through some breeding. We have to go through some of this. We need some complete some quests. There's that chicken manure that I got. So we just gained a little bit of money. Um, we do have some more money to gain because these tanks, of course, have been running like crazy. And uh, yeah, we have these tanks with uh, pretty much this is like four quests worth to complete. This is like three quests worth to complete. So yeah, these things are doing phenomenal. I'm, I'm absolutely loving that. Um, and I think we might upscale this towards the end. So that way we can make a lot more money from that. Um, but yeah, all we have left is basically chickens which should be pretty easy. Chrome chickens, platinum chickens, blizz, all this, all this other stuff we need to do. Getting through the seeds is not going to be too hard because there are ore that will help us. Um, and then we just have a bunch of trivial quests like woot and things like that, that we just need to make the upgrades for and things like that. But other than that, the main, the main quests that are really hard, I think, in my opinion, is getting through here. Um, and then also getting the TARDIS set up. That's going to be something that's going to be pretty difficult as well, but I think we can handle it. Anyways, guys, Whew, man, today was a, a high-powered, high-energy episode. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really do appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us, or giving me, in this Let's Play. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.